What's cooking? Would you happen to know where the needle for the sewing machine in Emily's room is? I moved all of Gloria's sewing things out of there and put them in a little box. Look, I'm supposed to get the pies we baked before all the hullabaloo this morning ready for the delivery man. They gotta be put in the shipping container just so or he casts a kitten. This is how he wants them organized. Now why don't you go out on the porch and get those pies ready to go while I look for that sewing box? Sounds good. done. Those are the two brothers that built the inn and Josiah's house. Looks like there might be some kind of tunnel around here. There's something written on the back. Looks like this lever opens the couch. From the looks of those lanterns, I'm not the only one who's been down here recently. Jeepers! I'm behind one of the walls in Emily's room. I'll bet that's how someone makes that picture move. I asked Jane about the photo I found that allowed me to find that staircase that goes behind Emily's room. An old piggy bank. Swell, a dollar. This piggy bank looks like it's been here for a long time. I wonder if those tiles are supposed to make a picture.
feel like someone's watching me. Guess I better not leave the lights on. Jeepers, that sounds like Richard Top. This door must open right into his living room. I better not leave the lights on. Thanks for doing the pies. The more I do it, the worse I seem to get at it. Here's that box. I'm sure that sewing machine needle is in there somewhere. I see it. Remember, when it comes to using it, you're on your own, kiddo. I think I know why Emily has been seeing and hearing strange things. Well, I'm all ears. Tell me. I found a secret passageway that goes from the inn to Josiah Crowley's old house. And off of it, I found a staircase that leads to a space behind a wall in Emily's room. That's the staircase that's in this old picture. You mean, the noises that Emily's been hearing, the things she's been seeing, it's because someone's been sneaking around behind the wall in her room? It may even be that someone is trying to scare her on purpose. On purpose? Who would want to do something like that? I was able to open the staircase because I saw the picture I just showed you. And I found that picture on the shelf in your podium. You mean it was right there under my nose? Hold the phone! You think I'm the one who's been sneaking around? Well, I did find the picture right there. But I've never seen it before in my life. Besides, anyone who's ever been behind this desk could have seen that picture. It's hardly fair to go pointing a finger at me. You're right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. Well, you're just trying to help Emily, so I guess I shouldn't get mad. She went into town to run some errands. At least that's what I told her to do. Heaven knows she could use some fresh air. Well, I'll talk to you later. All righty dighty. I'll never forget the night it all began. That dark, stormy, fateful night when I decided the time had come to rid the world of the creature. But it would take money to do that. And to get money, I needed to confront my arch enemy, Nick, who had recently become able to transform himself fittingly into a giant warthog. When his forest hideaway came into view, I dismounted and approached the door on foot so I could take him by surprise. My fear that he would hear me proved groundless, for a terrible storm began to rage, washing away the sound of my footsteps. I peered through the rain-streaked window beside his front door and could see him sitting in front of the fire. He had returned to human form, but the malicious smile on his face suggested that he was recalling his recent poor sign exploits. Seeing that the door was unlocked, I hurled it open and marched across the room toward him. 
Step away from that bottle of warthog potion, I commanded, and give me the twenty gold coins you stole from my poor servant. I'm not going to give you a thing, save, perhaps, a taste of my sword. And with that, he drew his sword. In an instant, I had drawn mine, and so commenced the fiercest sword fight the world had ever known. The storm raging outside paled in comparison to our battle. To my surprise, Nick's experiences as a lower life form seemed to have improved his skill as a swordsman. I fainted, I parried, and yet victory eluded me. And soon I began to feel my strength ebbing from me. I was tiring rapidly. Summoning every ounce of what little energy remained in my body, I lunged at him one last desperate time. Ouch! Why, you've wounded me. I had managed to wound him on his right arm, just above the elbow. Curse you! His words, punctuated as they were by an untimely clap of thunder, sent a shiver down my spine. Save your breath, I intoned, and give me those gold coins. Here, take your precious coins. He tossed the bag of coins onto a chair, but as I reached for them, he reached for his bottle of potion, and in a matter of seconds, my night had gone from bad to horrible. Miss Drew, not bad at all. Hello, Miss Drew. Hi, Mr. Topham. Now what? Josiah ordered something from the Krollmeister Crystal Company just before he passed away. Do you know if it ever arrived? You must be talking about that chunk of quartz that came last winter. I still have it right here. Why? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm a rock collector. Do you think I could have it? Perhaps we can work something out. You see, amazing as this is going to sound, I am able to project my thoughts into another person's brain. Really? The only problem is, not everyone has the intellectual capacity to receive my thoughts. But since you have already demonstrated a high level of intelligence, yes, you may very well be the ideal subject. Me? Really? You are going to help me prove that I am telepathic. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to shuffle a deck which contains five sets of these cards. Then I'm going to turn my back, draw a card, look at it, and start transmitting my thoughts. When you receive my thoughts, you will identify the card I'm looking at. Once you correctly identify five cards in a row, I'll give you that piece of quartz. But what if I can't do it? Just stay focused on the cards and my superior brain power will do the rest. Very well. Let's begin.
This one. Excellent. Here's another. Tell me, what card is this? This one. Wonderful. Here's another. What card am I holding? This one. Excellent. Here's another. What card am I concentrating on? I think it's this one. Excellent. Here's another. Which card am I thinking of? This one. Very good. You did it. Well, actually, I did it. But in any case, thank you for your assistance. Here's the piece of crystal that Josiah ordered. Take it. You've earned it. Well, actually, I earned it, but let's not quibble. But, Mr. Topham, I didn't really... I mean, you didn't really... I mean, I'm afraid that subconsciously you may have... Uh... Yes? Never mind. Do you need anything else? It was nice talking to you. I'm sure it was. Thank you.